This is not an experience many people would want to have, let alone remember. Since 2012, tens of thousands of South Koreans have taken part in their very own living funerals. The service was created in the hope that simulating death, even for just 10 minutes, might just steer people away from taking their own lives. It reflects a dark reality that South Korea is grappling with. Government statistics indicate that about one person commits suicide about every 39 minutes in the country. Almost 14,000 people took their own lives in 2021. The country's suicide rate is among the highest in the world and tops the list among developed nations. But why is South Korea's suicide rate so high? We spoke to experts who say part of the answer lies in just how much South Korea has changed in such a short span of time. When hostilities in the Korean War were suspended in 1953, South Korea was left poor, rural, and devastated. But in the decades that followed, the country rapidly industrialized. Job opportunities saw exponential growth, which encouraged large numbers of people to migrate to the cities in the 1970s and 1980s. Within a single generation, the country became a world-renowned model of development. There were these posters and slogans around the country in the 1960s and 70s and 80s, and it was about building the South Korean nation. It was about building a place where people could feel safe, where people could feel prosperous, and where South Korea could rise itself up from the, the poverty and destruction that was inflicted upon it by colonization and civil war. The most amazing thing is, they actually did it. They actually built that nation. But while South Korea has changed outwardly, traditional values have remained. Historically, Korean values have been rooted in Confucianism, among other beliefs. A family-first attitude stresses the importance of community ties. Some kids even attend Confucian camps like this one during summer breaks from school. But as the economy has grown richer, family ties have started to unravel. I would suggest that individualism, this idea that my goals are the most important thing in life, that's maximum 10 years old in South Korea. For the longest time, right, South Korea has placed the development of the nation over the needs or desires of the individual. Korean people are always defined by who they are talking to, and this affects their language, this affects their behavior, this affects who they are. So that plays a big role in what we're seeing in terms of mental health suicide, because all of a sudden, that interdependence, they've been told they're individuals, uh, and, and they've experienced this neoliberalism from the 2000s onwards, and uh, that's been really um, hard for them. The rise of individualism can be seen in the growing number of people living alone across the country. More young South Koreans have been embracing single life and pushing back against the family unit. At the same time, the number of elderly people living alone reached a record high in 2023. Experts have linked isolation with higher instances of depression commonly tied to suicide. In South Korea, suicide tends to increase proportionally with age. An estimated 29 out of every 100,000 people in their 40s and 50s killed themselves in 2022. But among people in their 80s, the rate was more than double. The government has been trying to combat a widespread epidemic of lonely deaths as society rapidly ages. The proportion of elderly in the overall population is expected to reach 40% by 2050. On top of that, many older people live in poverty. In 2022, 
more than 40% of South Korea's senior citizens were found to be living under the poverty line. One reason for this is that the elderly are traditionally taken care of by their families. Until recently, that is. They don't think about pension. We don't spend a lot of money in uh, social welfare. So in terms of pension, like, you know, the older people, they didn't have that. So instead of saving money for themselves, you know, a lot of parents invest everything onto their children. They spend all their money. Their children's happiness is my happiness. So they don't really take care of themselves. So when they are really you know, older and aging and weak, they don't have money to support themselves. But what about South Korea's younger population? In a country well known for being hyper-competitive, young workers are feeling the pressure. Almost one in five South Koreans worked over 50 hours a week in 2021, according to the Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development. Some workers have turned to nap cafes like this just to get a few extra winks of sleep in. That's because for many, it is customary to work long hours into the night. There is a lot of competition because it's a small country, population is high. How can you succeed? You really need to compete with each other. The Korean success story is about effort. It's about getting on that grind and putting to it. And that's how it's become a economic and cultural powerhouse around the world. Some experts say the customs developed out of worry about economic stability. South Korea was among many countries to experience a huge financial crash in 1997, which left thousands of South Koreans unemployed. The International Monetary Fund had to step in to stabilize the economy. In the years that followed, workers feared another crash, piling on additional stress. But even when facing immense pressure to succeed, for most South Koreans, the idea of talking about the related stress is a whole other issue. In Korean culture, people don't go to see a therapist when they have like a mental health issue. So they go to like a church, pray or talk to their pastor and, you know, talk to their friends or, you know, you have to keep everything inside of you, right? Because you don't share those kind of things because that's a sign of weaknesses. In high profile cases, Local media don't mention the term suicide, instead referring to such deaths using the euphemism extreme choice. Politicians and celebrities alike have made these extreme choices at an alarming rate. Former President Ra Moo Hyun jumped from a cliff after details of a scandalous affair were made public. K-pop fans battled through a wave of tragedy when popular artists in their 20s were found dead in their homes, including Chinese Jong Hyun, Astro's Moonbin, Soli, and Kars Guhara. Since 2011, suicide has been the leading cause of death among South Korean adolescents. About 12 in every 100,000 people between the ages of 10 and 24 killed themselves in 2021. Experts say the country's intense education system plays a factor. Children are under intense pressure to get the grades needed to secure a spot in a good university and land a stable, well-paid job later on. Some parents even put their children through marine-style boot camps like this one to toughen them up. A 2017 study by the Korean Institute of Child Care and Education said 36% of two-year-olds were already receiving a private education. That goes up to more than four out of every five children when they reach the age of five. They will leave the house at around 8.30 in the morning and, and head off to school. They, they might come back around two or three in the afternoon, but then they will have hagwons, they will have these academies and institutes. And it's not uncommon, it's actually very normal for a student to go to a piano academy, uh, then to go to maybe a hapkido or taekwondo one, to have a science one, to have a math one, uh, to have an English lesson. They will have all of this extracurricular 
academic work to do. And then when they get home, that's when they have to start their homework. That's when they also have private tutoring at home and they'll have all of these lessons that they have to complete. Students aren't the only ones expected to conform to the demands of South Korea's school system. In September 2023, thousands of school teachers and staff rallied in Seoul to protest against the circumstances surrounding the death of a teacher. The 23-year-old was found dead at her school in July after she reportedly spoke about emotional distress related to complaints from allegedly abusive parents. Her death put a spotlight on a child welfare law passed in 2014. Under the law, teachers accused of child abuse can be automatically suspended. Teachers, however, have accused many parents of exploiting the law and are demanding more legal protection from parental bullying. The Korean Teachers and Education Workers Union surveyed more than 6,000 respondents. More than 60% said they had either been reported for child abuse or knew another teacher who had. Korean families, they've shrunk you know, incredibly and they have the lowest fertility rate in the world, I believe. Therefore, what you see is families will often have one child and that child, they will want that child to live a perfect life. They will want that child to be treated with the utmost respect in everything that they do. And, and that's the right of a parent, absolutely. 27 bridges run over the Han River that cuts through Seoul. The city says that each year, nearly 500 suicide attempts happen at these crossings. One span in particular, the Mapo Bridge, is even known by locals as the Bridge of Death. Since 2015, authorities have tried using CCTV cameras, guards, and even artificial intelligence to deter people from ending their own lives here. Policy changes are also in play. In April 2023, South Korea announced a plan aimed at reducing the suicide rate by 30% by 2027. The five-year plan includes more frequent mental health examinations, better counseling services, as well as improved care for those who have attempted suicide. However, Experts say society at large also needs to play its part in creating a far more supportive culture for any meaningful change.